Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, wherever you happen to be joining us today for this uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ session. My name is Alex Pena. I will be moderating along with uh, my fellow colleague, Nauman Maishawala, for uh, our final installment of the Build Your AutoCAD IQ for this fiscal year. Um, this session will be covering the third dimension, solid editing, tips and tricks in AutoCAD 2018. Um, this will be presented by my colleague, teammate, and fellow Alex, Alex Buller. Just to give you folks a little bit more information about ourselves, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Alex Pena. Alex Buller will be uh, presenting very shortly. We're both uh, technical support specialists out of the Boston uh, office here. Um, Nauman himself is an Autodesk expert elite um, out of uh, the Cincinnati area. Um, he has been working with us within the program for a few years now and is very knowledgeable. As presented AU classes, and you can find them on the forums answering questions and uh, any, any type of uh, assistance that we may need tonight or today. He uh, will be supplying that for us within the chats and answering questions and anything else that he feels um, should, uh, we should bring some attention toward. So um, before we get started, we always like to let folks know, um, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. Um, we'll try to answer them as quickly as possible, um, answer as uh, with most of the instances could be related to the topic we're discovering today or uh, covering today, but if not, um, we'll try to supply any links that may be helpful. Um, this session will be recorded and updated to our YouTube channel uh, fairly shortly after we re uh, the session is over. Um, we'll try to keep up with that. Um, links are available in the re registration reminder. And um, as always, we love to hear the feedback um, from folks, especially since this is the year end. Uh, sort of webinar. Uh, we will like to get ideas for the next year, um, different ways that we can interact with you folks that might be more beneficial to you if you find certain topics that aren't being covered or um, something you just really would like to know more about. Um, any of these uh, things should be mentioned in the post-webinar survey and uh, as recommendations or just feedback in general, if you like how the way we're structuring the program, if you would like things to be a little bit different, um, we're always open to listening to you folks as we try to kind of tailor these for you. And uh, just to supply some more information, um, this is uh, January 2018. As you can see, for February 2018 here, we don't necessarily have a uh, schedule out yet, but you will be receiving a reminder email. Um, this year, we'll actually be trying a, a few different things as well. Um, with the webinar being such a, a, a lengthy time, amount of time that folks have to dedicate to, um, something that we're looking into for the, this new fiscal year is um, kind of creating shorter content that's easier to digest for, for customers. So that's something to be on the lookout for. Um, the, the topics will vary. Um, some will be uh, certain things that we covered in webinars that we didn't get to go too in depth with, or um, some that can be actually related to verticals, um, such as uh, Civil 3D or Plant 3D, um, just in case folks did want to brush up on their skills or learn a new product. Um, so that's something that we are kind of looking into. Again, if you folks do have some feedback on that, we're always open to listening. Um, you can't always uh, obviously find all of these videos at the Build Your AutoCAD IQ uh, webinar playlist on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, you can download the data sets from our box folder, which will be available shortly after this uh, webinar is presented. And uh, from there, uh, we'll always try to supply as much helpful links as possible. Um, this slide here will kind of get you started on AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention with this being the 3D um, kind of side of things. We won't necessarily get into too much AutoCAD LT as it doesn't have the capability, but um, if there are instances where something's brought up that is compatible with AutoCAD LT, we'll be sure to point that out to you folks. Uh, uh, these are great links for uh, folks who are just getting started or who need to get brushed up on certain ways to troubleshoot, certain things uh, that they may have not been aware of. All this stuff is available um, publicly and we just try to kind of aggregate get it in one local spot for you. Uh, to this week's agenda includes uh, solid editing, so going within the properties palette, grip editing primitives, Boolean commands, solid editing, uh, and then solid versus surface versus mesh. Before we get into it, so um, before we do get into this, I do want to throw out a few polls for you folks, um, just to kind of get a, a scope as to uh, who, what kind of audience we're having here today. Uh, the first one that I want to uh, throw it out there is if this is your first AutoCAD, uh, I build your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Alrighty, so it looks about 69% of the folks that voted so far. I'll let this go for a little bit longer just to make sure I get an 
as close to a whole on the audience. Alrighty, so we'll close this guy out and we'll share the results. So um, it seems like 85% of the folks voted. 98% uh, said no, 3% said yes. Somehow the calculation is off there. We're at 101%. <laughs> We're giving you guys maximum effort at all times. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, throw out one more, or a couple more, I should say. Um, what we really would like to know is which AutoCAD application you are using. As I mentioned, um, this is a fairly important one just because if you are using the LTs, um, you may be uh, kind of lacking on some of the substance of this uh, webinar itself. And I'll let this go for a little bit longer just to... But uh, a good point to actually make would be is if you are using the LTE, this may be an option to consider getting the AutoCAD full version if you see some features that you really like within the 3D. And um, from there, it's something that I, I personally would recommend. Uh, why not? Why limit yourself? Um, we could always find ways to uh, create information or present information in, in a more concise way for folks, then why not try? I'll close this guy out and uh, share the results. So it seems like we have about 73% of the folks working with AutoCAD for Windows, so a majority of us, um, and 31% AutoCAD LT for Windows. This would be good exposure for certain things that the AutoCAD for Windows can do. So we'll do just one more. Send it off, and this is uh, something that we normally like to ask is what version of the program you're using. A lot of times in technical support, we'll see that folks are using earlier versions or versions that uh, aren't supported anymore. So we definitely like to recommend, hey, honestly, you can see on the latest versions, you'll get the latest features, the latest updates, and hopefully um, less problems. Uh, a lot of the times you try to go through and mitigate a lot of the legacy issues that were found in earlier versions of the program. So it's something that we definitely recommend. And I'll let this one go for just a little bit longer. Alrighty. So it seems like 64% of us are on the latest and greatest, 21% um, not too far behind on the 2017. And um, for the folks who just don't know which way, uh, the, how to find this information, um, just a quick way to do this would be typing in about on the command line and hitting enter, uh, A-B-O-U-T. Uh, from there, you'll, you'll be prompted with the product version and if you have any updates and such. Um, one good thing to keep in mind, folks, you can always get to the Autodesk desktop app, and from there, uh, you'll be able to access any of the latest updates for the product version you have. A lot of times, as I mentioned, um, those updates will help with any of the issues you may be seeing. So um, now that we've done this uh, entire onboarding here, I'm going to send you over to my fellow Alex, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to show you guys some cool new things within the program, things that you haven't learned. And if, they, if it is something that you have learned, maybe something that um, kind of brushes up your skills on it. So um, without further ado, I'll kind of uh, toss it over to him and let him take over when he is ready. All right, All right Alex, thank you so much. Let me just uh, get presenting here. And it looks like we can see it. All right, well, Alex Pena, thank you so much for that great introduction. Um, again, my name is Alex Muted. Just to confuse everyone, we're kind of slowly making sure that everyone in the Boston office is just named Alex for ease of name remembering. Um, but anyway, I'm happy to be here. I'm going to be going over some 3D modeling with you guys. Now, we did this last year where we took our time and actually had like a case study of using a lot of the functionality available to us in AutoCAD. And, but the one thing that we did kind of recognize, I guess the post-mortem was, you know, we were able to do a huge amount of this modeling with only a handful of tools, but we really didn't do a good job at, at going through the entire spectrum of functionality that is available to us in the software. So rather than doing a case study this go around, I think, um, the best thing to do is to just kind of take a step back and go through all of the functions that are available to us in um, AutoCAD for uh, 3D solid editing and, and just kind of show you more systematically what each one of those does within the software. Now, I have a vanilla out of the box AutoCAD installation here. So before we really dive into um, 
going through the commands. The first thing that I want to do is I want to actually make sure that I'm in the 3D modeling workspace. So if I go down here to this little gear doodad, I have the option for 3D modeling. And then from here in the home tab, we have easily accessible uh, the, the commands for, for solid editing. And this is really where we're going to be spending a lot of our time. Now, again, like uh, Alex had mentioned, if you're using LT, this isn't going to be available to you. But I still don't want to discourage you from leaving the webinar. I, I mean, feel free to stick around, take a look at what we're doing, see if it's something that interests you, like Alex was mentioning before. But also, if you have like a super fast internet connection, you might actually be able to get AutoCAD at some point within the presentation. If you just open up a web browser, and, and if you just Googled Autodesk AutoCAD, you should be able to navigate yourself towards a free trial download, and that gives you 30 days of full access to the software. So if you just want to maybe quickly go ahead and do that and then get the software, that way you can actually see what it is we're doing. Now, once we're in our 3D modeling space, you'll see up here in our home tab, you know, over to the left we have our modeling where we have our primitives where we can create boxes, cylinders, and a whole bunch of different geometry. You know, there is some editing functionality for those primitives in here. Now, I'm not going to spend time here. I think there, there might be webinars that have been done in the past that kind of go into a greater detail on the creation of these primitives. But I'm really going to be spending my time in the solid editing and to some extent the, uh, the mesh. Now over here, we have union, subtract, intersect, and interfere. And these are referred to as our Boolean operations. And I don't know if any of you remember um, linear algebra or logic in university, but it's actually uh, named after a guy named George Boole, who did a lot of work on the logic behind how these operations impact geometry. So we kind of named that stuff after him. But we have the slice. We have the thicken, we have down here, extract, imprint, color edges, copy edges. We got extrude, and I'm not going to list all these. We'll go through these systematically. And then down at the bottom here, we have separate. Now, there are a couple of these that we're not going to touch on. Um, because the geometry that we're dealing with, as you can see in the model space, is fairly primitive. But you know, when you get to a little bit more complicated geometry, you know, it might be something that you guys want to take a look at um, because it should help uh, clean and, and, you know, have a certain degree of QA, QC on your, on your models. So let's just get right into this. I'm going to zoom in. Now, just to, to, I guess, bring you a little bit up to speed, I'm, I'm kind of looking at things in an isometric view. If you see my view cube here, I kind of just tagged one of the isometric corners, but if I hold down the shift and center scroll button, I can move around my environment. And just to give you a sense that, yeah, it is, in fact, some 3D geometry that we're looking at. And if ever I get lost, I could just click on that isometric view again and zoom in. The other thing I, I just want to touch on, because I am going to be bouncing back and forth a little bit between visual styles, up here in the left corner, are the options that we have available for visual styles. So right now, the default is for hidden, but you know I can change the style, conceptual, and you'll see that my model space is going to be updated based on the visual styles that I have selected. And some certain features show up a little bit better in different visual styles. But for now, I'm going to keep things on hidden. And I'm actually just going to start, I'm just going to dive in. The first command, I want to show you is union. So say I have two individual 3D solids. These are two separate entities and you can see if I grab one I can move it away and again if I hold that shift down and center scroll button they are disconnected. But rather than having two individual components, say hypothetically I want to make these one entity, one 3D solid. What I can do is I can go up to my union, and I can select my two objects, hit enter, and now they are one. So as the name implies, I made a union of the two to make one. So pretty straightforward. 
Move it on to subtract. Now, say in a situation I have in my model two features, but rather than having the two here, I actually want to remove where the bottom object, or top object, but for now let's do the bottom, where this bottom 3D solid intersects this top one. I'm going to go up here, hit subtract. Now if you look at the bottom, you can kind of keep track of what the, uh, the commands are, are prompting me. The first selection is going to be what I want to keep. So in this case, I, I want to keep the top 3D solid. I'm going to hit enter, and then the second object is what I want to take away from that top 3D solid. So then I hit enter, and then you can see I've now cut out where that bottom one, uh, where that bottom 3D solid was um, kind of intersecting that top one. And I can just kind of quickly show you what that looks like if I did the opposite. I've removed where that top block was because I selected the bottom 3D solid first and then removed the top one from it. Intersect. Now, maybe in a hypothetical situation, as I'm modeling, I just want to keep where these two 3D solids intersect. I can go up here, and I'm going to select my two 3D solids, enter through the command, and you'll see I'm left with only where those two intersected. So kind of handy. Interference is very similar to intersect in that it's a way in which we can identify where two things are um, intersecting. I shouldn't say things, where two 3D solids are intersecting. And have it as almost like a, a check and balance with our modeling. Like say we have a very complicated model, but we need to ensure that at certain points these series of 3D solids are in fact intersecting with each other. And I'm actually just going to show you, I'm going to make this a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to copy this guy over. just to kind of make the model a little bit more complicated. I'm going to go to this guy here, Interference, select first set of objects. I'm only going to select the top one, and then I want to select where subsequent 3D solids intersect that top guy. And here we go. We kind of zoom in. We kind of go into a wireframe visual style. And you can see graphically where those two features are intersecting. And we have options to zoom, we can pan, you know, we can rotate just to kind of get a, a little bit more um, conceptual sense of where things are going. We can kind of highlight one over the other to see where things are intersecting. And if I just leave this guy selected and I hit close, so delete interfering objects after create on close, it's gone. So it's not actually retaining that information. However, maybe I do want to keep that information. If I run through the interference command one more time, I'm going to go back into this dialog here. If I uncheck delete those objects and I close it, I actually get to keep those guys. So let me move that guy up there, and there they are. And I could move things around, and you can see that they are remaining there. And, and actually, if I, if I take this guy and I right-click and I go to Properties, I'm actually going to leave this guy up. You can see that it did, in fact, create a new 3D solid. And I'm just going to keep things as original as possible because I think we're going to send you guys this uh, this data set. And uh, just just so you guys know, if you if you weren't sure what I was doing, a quick way to undo all of your work um, is to do a Control Z or Z for the American Alex in the room. Next, I want to show you guys slice. 
Now, I have here a 3D solid. I have a, a primitive that's a sphere, but you know, this is a perfect example how um, certain visual styles don't really depict what's going on. All I see is kind of a circle. So I'm actually going to go, uh, let's just do realistic. Gives you a much better handle on what it is we're looking at here. You can actually see that this is, in fact, a sphere. Slice is pretty cool. It enables me the, the opportunity to kind of cut through my 3D solid in any which way I want. So if you go up here, it looks like the uh, wedge of cheese with the cheese knife cutting through it. If I click on that guy, I can select my 3D solid, hit enter, and at the bottom you'll see that we got a whole bunch of options on how we can go about slicing our 3D solids. Um, you know, if we had intersecting 3D solids, we can kind of pick one over the other. If we had an intersecting surface, we could do that. Um, we could do it on a bunch, on a bunch of different uh, axes or planes. So for this example, I'm just going to take the XY plane. And it's going to ask me, well, where on that XY plane do I want to make my slice? I'm actually just going to select the center of the sphere. And then next, it's going to ask me, what do I want to keep? I got the choice of slicing this thing in half and keeping both sides. Or I can pick one or the other. For now, I'm just going to default to both. And you'll see now I actually have two. Let me zoom that. There we go. Two separate 3D solids. And I can grab one and I can move it away. You see I got now two separate solids sliced right through the middle of that. Now I'm just going to undo undo all that, make sure it's one again. I just want to quickly show you what it looks like if I were only to keep the bottom one. So again, I'm going to go to my slice, select my 3D solid, hit enter. Actually, I'm going to make sure I select the X, Y plane. So if I scroll up or down on the Z axes, if I have a positive Z, it's going to keep the top half of my sphere because I'm cutting on that XY plane. If I go down in the negative Z, I'll keep what's on the bottom. So say I just want that bottom. There we go. Super easy. Really cool way to just really simply edit geometry in, in AutoCAD. Now, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about Thicken. Thicken is super useful for when you want to go from a very, very simple primitive 3D object. In this case, I got myself a 3D spline. But ultimately, I need this to be tangible as a 3D solid. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extrude this guy out using the extrude option here. And I'm going to stretch this guy out. Not quite there yet. If I select on this guy, you'll see that it's actually only a surface. So a surface is something with infinitesimally thin thickness. Really not going to do us a whole lot of good, especially when we're going through the solid editing options. But what I can do with this guy is thicken him. Up here, if I click Thicken, oop, let me just do it in this order of operations. I'm going to go Thicken. I'm going to select my surface. I'm going to hit Enter. And then it's going to give me the option of, well, how thick do I want this? And you can basically enter something. One, maybe not the best example, kind of silly looking. But say if I did something a little bit more realistic, like uh, 0 0.01 units. I can actually zoom in and see that, yep, I now have something that's tangible with thickness. And if I click it, it's actually been converted to a 3D solid. Now, say as we're modeling and, you know, doing our thing, we encounter the situation where, you know, geez, you know, I, I created that sophisticated shape and I have this 
feature cutting through it, and I really don't want that to be there, and I really want to make these two separate 3D solids, one on each side of where this wall is intersecting. Just a hypothetical situation. Right here, we have the separate command. I'm going to select on this guy, and I'm going to select my 3D solid. Oh, you see that at the bottom? It's not working. Something's wrong. 3D solid must be selected. Let's just make sure we're doing this right. So I'm going to select this guy. Yep. You see? Still a surface. So let me go through. I'm going to thicken this guy. 0.01. There we go. So now it should hopefully work because I was trying to do the operation, the solid editing on the 3D solid, solid editing on a surface, which isn't doable. So I'm going to go select, separate, and whoops, I got to, hold on guys, I'm going to select, and hold on, something's changed, select a 3D solid, oh, you know what? <laughs> kind of skipped an entire step here because this is actually still just one thing. First thing I want to do is I want to slice these two guys. Nope, not slice. Subtract. Brain fart moment, guys. Sorry about that. Huh, there we go. Jeez, I think, my, <laughs> I think my screen just wasn't refreshing. So anyway, do as I mean, not as I say. Sorry about that. So yeah, I first had to basically subtract that wall out of my um, curved 3D solid. So now, back on track, um, I got these two, two things, these two 3D solids, but they're still behaving as one, and I really don't want that to be the case. So I'm going to use the separate going to select my 3D solid, and now, yes, finally, we have two separate 3D solids. Whew, that was painful. Sorry about that, guys. I think that's called a, a Volker moment for those of you guys that do this a whole lot. So I feel like there has to be at least one Volker moment per webinar, and, and hopefully we end it there. But anyway, so there you go. That's basically the separate um, function for AutoCAD. Moving on. I'm going to show you how to create a shell of a 3D solid. Now, here we got a torus. And if I go into my um, primitive options, it's this guy here. But the thing is, is this guy's like a solid donut. Um, but let's think about a case study. Like, say, maybe when we're thinking about our bike, we actually needed to design the inner tube of the bike wheel. So it can't be solid. It actually needs to be hollow. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this guy over. And I'm going to use the shell command. I'm going to select my torus. Hit enter. And at the bottom in the command line, you'll see that I'm, I'm basically prompted to enter an offset distance. This is actually going to represent the thickness of my shell from the outer extent working inward. So let's do 0 0.05, something a little bit more recognizable when I slice through this guy. So here you go. Should work. I still have myself a 3D solid, but it should be hollow. So at this point, you know, I, I could slice through things, but you know, I really don't want to do that because I don't want to have two separate 3D solids, but I, I still want to make sure that it actually worked. Over here, we have the selection pane. If I click this, I can temporarily slice through things. It's super handy for QAQC. So I'm just going to slice along center to center, and I'm temporarily creating a cross section of my donut and my inner tube. And you can see if I 
don't tag the cross section, but if I tag my donut, you see, it's hollow. You know, I should be able to walk right through there. And if I'm done doing my QA, QC, and analysis, I could just tag that, delete it, bam, I'm back to normal. But I still have one single 3D solid. So you can slice it if you want, but, you know, for the integrity of this, you know, sometimes it's easier just to use this kind of handy selection pane to kind of slice through things. So moving on, kind of went over the Boolean uh, operations along with some other uh, functionality. I kind of want to change gears now and I want to take um, a, a model, in this case a, a very simple primitive, and show you how we can go about moving faces and modifying and editing faces. So we're kind of moving away from the appending of 3D objects to the editing. First one I want to show you is the extrude faces. And I'm actually going to go back to hidden. Don't want to confuse you guys with the, um, the visual style here. So I got myself a cube, 3D solid. But say after I made my, my cube, my, my design, whatever it is, I, I want to move one of my faces out a little bit. Over here I have extrude faces. If I click on that, you'll see that if I hover my mouse over the 3D solid, the entire thing is being selected. But if I hold down the control button, I can actually select individual faces on my 3D solid. So say this is the guy I want to move. I'm going to select that, hit enter, and it's going to ask me for a height of which I'm going to extrude or extend this face out a certain distance. So let's say one unit. Now, ha, huh, it's going to ask me for a taper. I'm just going to say zero for now, just to show you that it's basically moved this thing out one unit, because I think this guy is basically just one unit cubed. Yep, perfect. So it basically doubled my geometry here. I'm going to undo. And I'm going to run through that one more time. But this time, I'm actually going to do the extrusion along a path, because I kind of went pretty quick there. I'm going to hit extrude face. I'm going to hold down the control button, and I'm going to hit that face, hit enter. If you look at the command line, kind of glazed over this, I apologize. But one of the options is we can extrude that face along a path. So say in this situation here, I actually want to extrude that along this path here. I can type P for path, select my path, enter out, and then there you go. Instead of doing it linearly or perpendicular to the face itself, I can do it along a path. Now, when I was testing this out, I actually noticed that it doesn't always work. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can reproduce this quickly live on air. I'm going to create a pretty complicated 3D polyline, something super crazy. Because the functionality appears to break down, but that's not to say that what we're trying to do is not possible. I'm going to extrude my face along a path, select my path, and you see nothing happened. At some point, it's possible to enter a situation where the path along which we're trying to ex extrude isn't going to work. But we have a way around that. For this, I'm actually just going to do a slightly different geometry just so we can compare them. I'm just going to create a circle. So say I have a circle and I want it to be represented as a you know, cylinder kind of going along this path. Over in our modeling environment, we have the sweep command. From the sweep command, I can actually select my circle, hit enter, and then my alignment. I'm going to select my alignment, and then there you go. Maybe not the best um, path to use, but you can see that it actually took that circle and it swept it along that path, and then we were basically able to generate a 3D solid on that complex path 
by using the sweep rather than extrude phase. So if you encounter a situation like that, just remember, hey, you're not out of luck. You're not stuck on modeling. There are other ways in which you can kind of achieve the same thing. And that's actually one of the coolest parts of AutoCAD. I feel like there's 10 different ways of doing the same thing, or at least getting to a point where your, your ultimate objective has been achieved. Now, I, I do want to do one last thing on the extrude face. And what that is, is actually to extrude outward. In this case, I'm just going to go perpendicular along the face. But I'm going to do it with a angle. So I'm not going to do a path. I'm going to do a height of 0 0.5 units. But say I wanted the extruded face to taper downward at a 15 degree angle. I can do that. Exit out. And then you could see what that looks like. Now this is super, super handy. Um, actually thinking back to our case study, when we were in here creating the gears on the bicycle, we did things slightly differently to kind of get that curved appearance. But if you have a situation like this where you just need to quickly represent a tooth on a gear, it's not, not bad. I mean, as you saw within like a couple of clicks, we got something that looks pretty similar to the geometry on our gear from that example that we had in that case study last year. So there you go. I'm going to move on. I'm going to go to taper face. And I just finished watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with my daughter the other day. And I told myself I'm not going to I'm not going to say something different, but I don't know if you guys seen that movie, but there's like taser face. <laughs> so taper face, not taser face, um, essentially gives us the ability to take the existing geometry we have and start kind of like cutting through it. If I go over here, I got taper face, not taser face, taper face. I'm going to hold down control. I want to select my face. And... Say I want to take this face and cut it inward at 15 degrees. I'm going to take my bottom point, and then I'm going to select another point along the axis in which I'm going to apply the angle. So here, and then 15 degrees, and it cuts in just like that. And I'll take another orientation just to kind of give you a sense. So say. This face here, I want to cut in this way, 15 degrees. I can go taper face, hold down the control, enter my two points along, which I'm going to project this way, 15 degrees. So taper angle is 15. And then there you go. Pretty quick and pretty easy. All right, moving on to move face. Over here, we got move face. I'm going to hold down control just to select a face. Now this is similar to extrude, but the cool thing about this modality is we can actually do it based on geometry that's already existing. So say we have this widget, and I, I really need to not extrude, but I need to move out this face by the distance represented here. So I can click on these two points, and then there you go. So nice when you have already known geometry. Um, you know, you don't have to type in a specific number. Um, you know, you can kind of just quickly tag along the geometry of this widget or model that we already have created. Copy face is kind of handy. So hypothetical situation, I created my widget. I got uh, things looking the way I want them to. Um, but I need to make a new widget. But I want to recycle some of the faces that I created because I really like them. And I think they're, they're working well. If I go over here, I'm going to copy face. Now, actually, before I do that, I just want to show you guys what I'm doing. So here we got our widget, and it has like this hole perforated right through it. I'm going to go to copy face. I want this guy and this guy. 
say those are my starting points. I'm going to hit enter. I'm just going to offset that guy somewhere else over here. So now instead of reinventing the entire thing or doing a bulk copy and paste and trying to modify things, I can actually just take a couple of my faces as the starting point for my new widget. So that's kind of a handy tool as well. Offset face. So over here, we have this option to offset face. This is kind of cool. I can take a couple of different faces and move them out by different dimensions. So say I got my widget here, but I realize, you know, I was off and these guys need to be, you know, extended further out. I can select those guys, hit enter, specify my distance. In this case, say one unit. There we go. Another handy tool. It's going to undo. Delete faces. Before I show you this guy, I'm going to extrude this guy out by one unit and say 15 degrees. So say I have this hypothetical situation where, you know, I realize instead of like this tapered nose on my model, I actually want to have this plane projected further out. So I want to taper it on the top and the bottom, but I really don't want the sides. I don't want to redo my entire model. I'm going to go over here, delete face, again, holding down the control. Whoops, grab the wrong face. Delete face. There we go. Hit enter. There you go. I removed that face and basically projected outward the plane on the remaining face that was there. And I can do the same thing on the other side. And then there you go. So now I have it tapered on the top and the bottom just the way I want it. Rotate face is great for making subtle edits and changes to a face. Um, the way this works is if I go over here, rotate face, holding down control, hit enter. I have a whole bunch of axes options, but I'm just going to default to the uh, 2.1. If I select bottom and top and say I want to rotate by 15 degrees, there you go. Basically took this as my two points and I rotated inward. Had I done negative, it would have rotated the other way. Whoa, uh, there we go. Prove me wrong. Negative 15. There we go. There we go. So rotated the other way around. So kind of cool for making subtle edits. Color faces. So say we got our little widget here and we realize that maybe we want the inside of that uh, hole to be red. I'm actually going to change to a realistic view style because it'll be a lot easier to see that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go color faces. I'm going to select in there. Enter. Let's make that guy red. And then there you go. So you can do that for any of the faces on there. I'm going to go back into my hidden. So there are some other functionality options that we're going to get into here. I want to show you guys a little bit of press pull. Um, but before I actually show you that, I'm actually going to jump ahead over to imprint. This is really, really handy when you start getting into like the super detailed modifications of, in this case, our widget. So say I had my original widget and I realized I need to add some detail to this side here, but I don't want to recreate this. I don't want to have to go in and, and create new 3D solids. I just want to take this existing guy and just make this a series of individual faces that I can edit. I've gone in and I've created, there we go. I created these 3D polylines along the face, these guys here, but I want to basically imprint this information on the face. I can do that. 
Uh, I gotta find it. There we go. If I hit imprint, I'm gonna select my 3D solid, and then it's gonna prompt me to select the objects to imprint. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna select my 3D polyline. Do I wanna delete the source object? In this case, yeah, I don't want it to get in the way. I'm just gonna work my way up so that now those are no longer 3D polylines, but they're actually separate faces within which I can make some edits. And kind of going back to that press pull, I can now grab these guys and start making changes to my model. So there you go. Extract edges. Now, this is actually kind of useful for, for those that have that, that work between AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. I have my 3D solid here, but say I only want to um, grab certain edges as a line so I can throw it over to someone that's using AutoCAD LT so that they can take a look at things. Over here, extract edges, select my 3D solid, hit enter. Doesn't really look like anything now, but if I move my 3D solid out of the way, you'll see here I have my lines representing the edges of my 3D solid. Color edges, just like we can color faces, we can color edges. So if I go over here, color edges, and if I kind of, am I in, oh, I'm in color faces, thank you. Color edges, but, hmm, you know what? I'm actually having a hard time grabbing these guys. This is kind of silly, I wanna show you a little trick. Over here we have the selection filtering. I have no filter selected right now. Say I only really wanna focus on selecting edges. I can go over here, select edges, so now my selection is going to filter to only recognize the edges on my 3D solid. So say these are the guys that I want to color. Whoops, did I grab the wrong command? Color edges. Oh, I'm in copy edges. Thank you. Jeez. Color edges. There you go. I'm going to go color them, not copy. And let's say, let's make those guys red. And there you go. We got some red edges, but super handy trick. So, you know, I like to use the control to sub-select my faces, but you can actually do the same thing over here in the uh, filtering. So instead of using the control, I could just select that face as my filter. Copy edges, see I was jumping ahead. Copy edges. Basically, as the name suggests, affords me the opportunity to grab my edges and copy these guys out. And if I select them, there we go. They're just lines. All right. Now, the last thing I want to quickly touch on is converting things between 3D solids, surfaces, and meshes. Now, I had mentioned before that a, a surface is a infinitesimally thin sheet. And a 3D solid, as the name implies, is a 3D solid. Now, the thing with a 3D solid is it's not all that great for modeling. It doesn't really act like a nice piece of clay that I can just grab components on and, and move things around and have that you know, ability to model things the way I want them. So I just wanna show you what that means, what that or what that looks like. I'm actually gonna create, whoop, I'm gonna go back to home I'm gonna create a sphere. So I got this primitive here. I'm gonna go into realistic. 
This is a pretty extreme example. This here is an easy one to, to show what I mean. If I select my sphere, 3D solid, there's really not a whole lot. I can, I can move it, I can you know, scale it, but I can't just start modeling. I can't turn my sphere into a football or a face or something else other than a sphere. What I can do is I can convert this thing to a mesh. So we have this command, convert to mesh, which will take my 3D solid, convert it to a mesh, and you can actually kind of get a sense of what's going on here. It's taken my, my primitive, and it's basically modeled a whole bunch of these faces, and these are a lot more intelligent than what we've been looking at before. Because if I were to subselect, holding down the control, and if I grabbed some of these faces. If I moved it around, you can actually see the intelligence being done behind the motion. So it knows that these faces are connected to adjacent polylines, which are connected to points, and it's taking the information on the subsequent connected face and, and polyline and points. So there's a huge amount more intelligence, which affords us a lot more flexibility in modeling something. So very, very handy. So we can start with something, we can start with some of our widgets and using that convert to mesh, create a mesh and do some additional modeling to it. We can refine our mesh, we can add resolution to it, so decrease the size if we refine it instead of a whole bunch of faces being selected simultaneously, I can go in and really just focus on one or another. Oops, I didn't select it. There we go. And you can, ah, sorry. You can really start to see how intricate we can get in making these changes. But say, I'm finally done. I took my mesh, made my model, but I still want to capitalize on a lot of the functionality that we just went over throughout this webinar. If I select my mesh, I can type in convert to solid, and it's going to do the best it can, it might take a while, to take that mesh and convert it back into a 3D solid. And once I've done that, I can go back here, I could you know, use all the functionality that we've been going on before in, the, in this webinar. The last one, and I realize, wow, this is uh, it's almost the top of the hour, sorry about this guys. Um, the last one is basically taking that 3D solid and converting it into a surface. So we can use a convert to surface command right here. So if I tag it, we'll see that it's a surface. And if I took my, my plane, you can see that it's a, you know, a cube with infinitesimally thin walls. So that's pretty much the end of my presentation. So Alex, do you want me to pass it back to you? Unmuted. Yep, you can pass that on over and we'll finish off the slides. Um, thank you so much for that, Alex. I think that uh, we're, we're all learning <laughs> many things here from this, from this presentation. I know I, I had taken a few different notes myself. And let me just get that going. So let me know when you can see my screen. Uh, Alrighty, so we just click on through this. And um, uh, there will be some additional resources, as Alex mentioned, not me, the other one. <laughs> um, that he, uh, there was a webinar that was presented last year, and um, it, it was a great resource as to um, how to take all those foundational blocks that he just went through and kind of putting them all together for that bike that they made. They also had a few different um, ways to use 3D model and rendering, um, something that we definitely recommend. You could find that on the Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist as well. Um, if anything, probably getting a better understanding with this uh, presentation and then moving on to that one, you could possibly go through and recreate the entire situation 
and actually use it for more practical situations if you do find one that, for example, um, might fit your day to day. Uh, I knew that I, I know that I learned a lot. So one thing that I do want to do is before we end this, I know we're at the top of the hour, is um, just basically get one more uh, poll out there. Um, and a fairly popular one um, is, uh, did you learn something new today? Uh, a lot of the times we like to kind of uh, gear these towards something that hopefully develops something, uh, gets the, the brain kicking in, in different ways that you're not used to in a sense, or something that, that you, a new feature that might, you might be able to use on a day-to-day -day basis as uh, making you more efficient toward your work. I do see here we're about 66% voted. Just going to let it go for a little bit longer. Alrighty, so I'll close this guy out and share the results. So it looks like a pretty favorable 97% of you folks were able to learn something new. For the other 3%, feel free to come in contact with us if you'd like to present your own webinar on, on, how, to, on how to better this. Uh, we're always listening to feedback. Um, again, Alex, you did an amazing job. Um, I held it down for all the Alexes. I think someone mentioned uh, in, the, in the questions that they have a dog named Alex as well. So, <laughs> yeah. But bring them to the Boston office, um, we'll full, do a full Alex takeover. Um, if, if we are at the top of the hour, so we'll be ending the recording now. But if you do have any questions, um, feel free to send them into the, the webinar email alias. Um, from there, we'll be able to respond to them um, right after this. And as I mentioned, we'll try to um, update these uh, to the YouTube playlist as soon as possible. Uh, thank you, folks, for joining us today. And uh, we hope to see you the next time.